So Dave Lounsbury, our CTO, has got a few questions for you. so far, um, I guess, proves the point, um, and we've got a lot of guidance material. Uh, we now would like to get into the phase of normative um, standardization, which then uh, drives product adoption when we ultimately get to the value. But even today, just using the guidance of the reference architecture as this kind of map that I was talking about earlier is value in and of itself. At least I can, I can assure you from, from various different customers who can prove their way of looking at the value chain and, and, uh, and, and having the various different functions working with each other already tremendously without even any product um, type thing in the, in, in, in the game. So there's, there's actually already quite some value in there. But ultimately, yes, we need to drive adoption in the market. That's, that's what the next steps is all about. Actually, I can add that uh, if I look at the roadmap for our IT for IT uh, so solutions, and process and data interventions, we are already guided by this architecture. So we don't have ready solutions yet, but it helps us think through what the logical order is of replacement software applications, what kind of database uh, we need to create, uh, and also uh, start working on our trusted sources of data in that context. So it already provides handrails. Obviously, it doesn't really uh, produce a, a finite or finalized product, uh, but uh, it does a lot already for you. Uh, I think uh, with quite immediate payoff. Well, I think the key point, you know, the reason we're here today launching this for the Open Group is because we see this as a pervasive issue. It's one that we've all been working on individually as well as together. And um, you know, this is about if the world is getting continually more complex. Actually, the more people that we can plug into that, both from the uh, from the software point of view, from the service provider point of view, but also from the the end user point of view as well. Actually, hopefully, we can turn this into a standard because. Life's only going to get more complicated. There'll be more things popping up all over the place. And if we can find a way to integrate those around a common taxonomy, around a common data model, hopefully we're in a plug and play world for everybody. Yep. So this uh, sounds like a good initiative, but is this only for a really large IT shop like Shell? Or will smaller companies benefit from this? And if so, how? Well, again, I, I, I can start since we've been working with customers using this reference architecture. Um, let's say that you, you, you might be able to get the biggest effect with larger customers, but it's very much applicable to any size customer, and we have been using it almost with any size customer um, in, in the market. Actually, um, if, if you look at um, one of our um, fellow consortium members, Munich Ray, for example, mm. um, might be a good example because even though they are a very big company from a revenue perspective, but the way they do business, actually the IT is very, very, very focused 
um, around very few critical applications and pro business processes that they drive, like for example, underwriting in, in the reinsurance industry. Uh, but they, they use it in exactly the same fashion um, in, 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 in their organization and uh, are a good, good example of the diversity of, of applicability that we can drive here. I mean, we work with lots of very large corporates. They've all got this complexity problem. They, it's a big problem for all of them. But actually, as you say, as you start to look to smaller organizations, they're often more extensively sourced. They're often using more services than we have. They've all got the integration problem that we spoke about. So this should be applicable at all levels, I would have thought. Yeah, I look at the supplier community, both IT and non-IT. Uh, they need to talk with us. Uh, so, and partly, it's IT talk. So uh, it's immediately relevant for the smaller players in our ecosystem uh, to get their minds around this integration challenge as well. I think... The, the models that Daniel and Hans presented sum it up in terms of the shifting ecosystem that is IT. <coughs> At the end of the day, the standard is going to help us work together to choreograph all this. So it's almost, you know, there's a, 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 an analogy with, with the music that the first speaker made this morning. But the world is just going to continue to get complicated. So the, the, the standard will have an, in, an increasing value as that process of innovation unfolds. But I, I think the key thing is that we're talking about smaller organisations. There are gradations of small, so small, very small organisations. It really is going to be not that interesting, but relatively small organisations relative to Shell. Yeah. So even for a small 50-person standards organisation, yeah. that they can see all of the phases in the in the reference model. Much more organized than we have a complex model. infrastructure. Yeah. So, how is the work of IT for IT different from the work of, of uh, COBIT under ISACA and how to manage and govern the uh, enterprise IT? Again, me? Okay. Um, so, first of all, there will be a very good track session yeah. um, in the afternoon with uh, Charlie sitting over there and Lars sitting in the back, the famous Scandinavian chief architect that I introduced earlier. Um, and they will talk about the positioning of IT for IT in very detail um, with um, ITIL, COVID, and, and other standards. Safe not to uh, uh, forget here. Um, but in, 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 in general, um, so we are really about the information model underneath. We're not about the process side of the house. We embrace those definitions of capabilities and, and KPIs on top. We do. Uh, but what we want to build is how the data actually moves in that value chain, what is owned, where, where you can uh, change things, how you integrate those things underneath, which is not specified neither by ITIL nor COVID nor ISO. I'm laughing a bit because I was uh, talking with Carl yesterday about what kind of questions can we expect. This is one of them. So I'm very happy that you're here to elegantly respond to that, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, that will be covered in more depth. Uh, I, would, I would add to that by saying that they're highly complementary. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. But again, back to the notion of choreography and so on, making these things work together. So governance is a key part of the IT for IT work. Um, but in the session, you'll have Charlie Betts and Lars Rossen explain the relationship a lot more fully. And again, we're at a stage of maturity where in the collaboration portal, we already have assets that can be picked up by people, a white paper on the relationship between ITIL and the IT for IT forums work, so that you can see exactly where we are in terms of our own perception of positioning. So we've got some substance, which we would be very keen to share with you. So uh, have you given any consideration yet to how IT for IT uh, may play a role in other of the activities going on at the Open Group, particularly things like the uh, Open Platform 3.0 work? There's a, there's a lot to think about there. Um, there's some, obviously, uh, connections um, at the end of it, in um, dependability through assuredness, uh, measuring those things, 
uh, architecture will come through. Um, the, the open platform, the, the, the integration of social, mobile, big data, cloud, internet things, all of those things will have some relevance. And like any other forum, the IT for IT forum will be encouraged to have meetings with other forums of the open group and, and share opportunities with each other. In, in addition, I, I did have it on the slide, but I didn't really yeah. talk to it. But the, the, the reference architecture, when we, uh, when we started building that out, we were certainly using concepts and methodologies out of the TOGAP um, definition. And we're using Ar Archimate to actually uh, uh, specify uh, the, the level two and three of, of, the, uh, of the reference architecture. I do also think that there might be a good opportunity for um, communication between IT4AT and TOGAF to, to maybe add a couple more aspects into the TOGAF methodology. Maybe I'm dreaming here, but, um, but a, a lot of what manageability means, so non-functional requirements in IT, I think could better be architected in, in, in the very front to make life a lot easier downstream. So if we bring the concepts of security, manageability into architecting applications from, from, the, from the start on, uh, we may make um, operations downstream a lot easier. Uh, not my cat, though. But <laughs> We're trying to get to the final slide, <laughs> uh, just so we can cover that. And <laughs> Communication is a challenge, but um, Martin's cat is... Um, very beautiful, but no longer with us, I think, is it? So have you got that last slide, Martin? So we just cover that. Um, one last question, Dave, because we've got okay. a few people on time. So if you consider the, uh, the convergence of uh, IT and operational technology in the IT for IT model, and the new IT and operational technology organization has to handle both traditional enterprise IT and uh, operational technology tasks such as you know, control systems and SCADA and things like that, and the interfaces in between. Is that part of the, the model you guys are looking at? The answer is yes. There's another white paper on the way that we address DevOps, Agile, and the concepts that surround it. Our subject matter expert is very well known. It's Charlie Betts, who's the author of the book on this um, material. Um, he relies in his book on an analogy with um, those of us that have had builders in the house. You know, we are now making shoes for the cobbler's children. We're catching up, and those concepts are built into the underpinning ideas that have been driving IT for IT in the last 12 months or so? So the answer is yes. And again, we have materials on the collaboration portal that people can see. But I think it's fair to say that the genesis of this has come out of corporate IT, if you like, and how oh, we manage sure. that better. But yes, if you start talking Internet of Things, if you start talking Census, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, 